You want to be a grifter? Grifter? Yes. Grifters, huh? You're one, all right. Grifter's got an irresistible urge to be the guy who's wise. There's nothing to whipping a fool. Hell, fools are made to be whipped. But to take another pro, even your partner, who knows you and has his eye on you, that's a score. No matter what happens. Wooden Nichols. Where have you been, Wooden? Where for out thou, Wooden? You've had a bit of a break, haven't you? Do you want to uh, tell me what you've been up to? Tell us what you've been doing. Well, as most people know, I work in the film and television industry. So my job shut down at the beginning of June because of the writer's strike and the studios knowing that the actor's strike was coming. And it has been an absolute blessing. I'm just back home. I am working out every single day, sometimes twice a day. That's swimming. That's hitting the weights. I'm eating healthy for the first time in a long time. It's just putting me in a much better mood, a much better state of mind. You've you've had a break from writing and directing psyops and you're now in the gym. And uh, So is that what you're doing? You're actually lifting because you said swimming, but you're actually lifting as well. Yep. So you're on the, all the you're on the protein shakes? I use the goat whey protein because the way it was described to me is goats share more of our body weight. So by using goat whey instead of the cow whey protein, it makes you more lean and cut as opposed to beefy. So you're on the goat, mm-hmm. the greatest of all time. So if we get into another beef with the uh, Tartars, you're, you're leading this one because you're the, the strong man. I've seen articles recently where, you know, the the mainstream media farce are calling exercise right wing extremism. So I guess that kind of makes you super right wing. Yeah. I was watching the Sex and the City reboot with my wife. I think it's called and just like that. And in the first episode, uh, the character, Mr. Big, who's like Sarah Jessica Parker's lover, he dies of a heart attack in the first episode while working out and i could only imagine that that's probably how a lot of people feel who got the vax they're probably like oh let me not get my heart rate up too much because they are hearing about pro athletes you know dropping dead they are hearing about high school athletes getting strokes and seizures and heart attacks and whatnot i I, it makes sense to me that the left would start labeling working out and exercise is right wing because that's something they know that they shouldn't be doing too much of because you could end up like Mr. Big and the Sex and the City reboot. Talk to me about this health grift because you said, didn't you, that basically all health products you'll find in aren't actually designed to make you healthy and boost your testosterone and make you all jacked and ripped, but actually kind of there to keep you where you are which is feminized and weak and not the the thing you're striving to be. It's, yeah, it's crazy how much the health food industry puts all that kind of crap in it. You look at all the granola uh, products and the majority of them have canola oil in it. These seed oils were originally created as machine lubricants and they should have stayed that way. Seed oils are horrible for humans. They are very high in linoleic acid that accumulates in your cell membranes and your adipose tissue and contributes to oxidative stress, eventually insulin resistance, all sorts of problems with seed oils. Get them out of your diet full stop. Corn, canola, soybean, safflower, sunflower, grapeseed, etc. Garbage. Seed oils are some of the worst fucking things your body can consume. There's some sort of a correlation between uh, seed oils and macular degeneration. Look, it causes inflammation and inflammation is fucking terrible for you no matter what. What is canola oil? Is there a can seed? Is there a canola seed? No, there isn't. There's rapeseed. This is actually rapeseed oil, um, which is grown in Canada. But the fine people of Canada thought it might be hard to merchandise rapeseed oil. So they called it Canadian oil or canola. 
Now, I was completely unaware of the dangers of these seed oils until you brought it up to me in our Dark Seed of Pornography, which was our first Rockfin exclusive video that we did. And now I just learned about a new one that I was unaware of is flaxseed because I just bought this chickpea milk. I was like, okay, this stuff is pretty good. And I've noticed that with all the alternative milks, they all have canola oil or sunflower oil or uh, soy oil in them. So it really is just one big joke because if you're trying to lean into an alternative health lifestyle, you're just immediately hitting a brick wall with, as you said, you know, these estrogen pumping testosterone killing products in it. So yeah, I bought this chickpea milk and I'm like, oh, cool. It just has flaxseed oil in it. But then I just watched a video online and flaxseed oil is no different. It's one of these estrogen boosting products that men are not supposed to be eating. So yeah, it's just kind of been, I mean, it's been a blessing to finally become aware of this stuff, but the road, you know, I realize is going to be long. I'm only about three months into this whole process. That's the thing though. It is, it's like a long-term, it's a proper commitment, a proper lifestyle and the, uh, the oils and stuff that they're everywhere, like to avoid them is almost, it's like an uphill battle. What's also mind blowing. And I found this one out more recently these seed oils are found in abundance in most shampoos as well. And I think it's either there must be an abundance of this rubbish. You know what I mean? Just like in excess, they have so much of it and they need to recycle it somehow. Or they know people are onto the oils in the diet and are changing their ways. So they're using shampoo as an estrogenic, you know, testosterone killing Trojan horse. And there's so many Trojan horses like that in Europe and the UK, like sliced bread. I can go and buy a baguette or pita bread from supermarkets. And, you know, they're pretty much clean, just like, you know, standard ingredients. But if I want sliced bread, and sliced bread's one of the most consumed products that's quick and convenient, you know, everyone eats it. It almost always contains soya flour. And conventional bread, it's wheat flour. Wheat or rye, it shouldn't contain soya flour. So I can't see it as anything but a Trojan horse, just to mess with our hormones so we're not as healthy as we can be. And, you know, perhaps even like suffer fertility issues and don't go on and have kids because that's what that sort of stuff will do. Also, as well, another Trojan horse um, are zinc supplements. You know, whenever you Google something like how to increase testosterone, you'll almost always stumble across that articles telling you to supplement with zinc because it boosts testosterone. And that is correct. Like zinc will boost testosterone, but only if your zinc is low, like if you're not eating enough red meat or something like that. But too much zinc, and these supplements are always too much. It, the, the dosages in them are always way above the normal like range. But too much zinc, it acts as a 5AR so 5A reductase inhibitor. So 5AR, they're the enzymes responsible for turning testosterone into the male hormone, DHT. And you want DHT because without it, you're feminized. And not only that, but zinc, it really is very powerful at lowering copper. And the two kind of work in concert. So when you have a lot of copper, if you ingest a lot of copper, your zinc, the zinc levels in your body will go down. And if you ingest a lot of zinc, your copper levels will go down. There's a lot of anti-copper propaganda on the internet. But the thing is, you need copper. You know, copper is responsible for so many reactions in the body. And yeah, not only that, but it's also responsible for generating uh, dopamine. And dopamine is so important because without dopamine, you don't have any drive like no ambition or joy or get go. You know, do you ever get when you were really in that sort of headspace and that mood where you, you almost want to like write a list and you want to go around and start achieving stuff. That's like a high dopamine state. But if you have no copper or low copper, you're going to have no dopamine. And that's why people that are smashing back zinc supplements, they can go on to develop apathy. Not only does it block your DHT, but then it, it'll, increase your apathy where you just don't want to do anything and you become almost lazy and pessimistic. So I see zinc as another kind of Trojan horse. It's one of the reasons I stay away from supplements. But what I wanted to ask you as well is because you've been 
you're way less well from my perspective anyway because we still talk and that you know frequently but you're way less interested in social media youtube do you think that's just a natural uh effect of just stepping away and being like i'm gonna get all this shit out of my diet clean up go to the gym and suddenly you just don't want to be in front of a computer is that kind of how you feel it's once you get that repetition going and you know you've got a good repetition going you stick with it and when we were at the height of making our videos i mean i was in front of the computer hours on end, days on end. i never really took a break it's any free time i had i was dedicating that to making videos and of course when you're not exercising and not eating healthy and then you're just staring at a computer screen all day sitting down hunched over a computer i think once i was able to step away from that and be away from that repetition of editing or researching it has been difficult to get the drive to want to sit down and and do any of that stuff yeah that's i feel you man and i was thinking about this as well because i consider myself like a part time youtuber i mean i'll lurk around on youtube but i don't put out regular content like other youtubers and i think about that full time youtuber and how stressful that must be because the only thing that i kind of that keeps me rooted to it is you know i get to write and be creative and do things like that if i had some uh, money and do it full time i think i'd probably go insane it's too much time at the screen just doing it part time but it's interesting as well because it, i kind of see them as the same thing this kind of the health community and the truther community they're kind of similar in the sense that they're kind of glamorous and they they promise you a product but it doesn't actually live up to it um what's beneath is kind of not yeah not as not that positive really like the truther movement should be enlightening but i don't feel that way about it anymore you know i i was saying to you that you know during the covid uh during the the pandemic that there's that sort of mantra of you know everything is a lie but now for me and maybe i'm just jaded and that it's just a result of coming out the other end of just being you know on youtube and stuff too much but it just feels like everything is about grifting like everything is a grift and it's like i was reading a um uh an article about bulletproof coffee what are the benefits of bulletproof coffee well it helps to maintain my energy levels in the morning it also prevents hunger so it sustains me to my first meal of the day and it improves my mental focus it's basically just bullshit you basically put butter or fat like oil into your coffee but so i was like, okay but i was reading what they were saying the benefits were of it but then what was also on the website was this whole article about how coffee contains like mycotoxins and you know that the beans are moldy and by the time you make your coffee yeah the beans are all like fungal and rotten and actually it's causing you to become more toxic so at first I was like oh this is interesting you know I'm going to cut back on the coffee but then because everything I see is grift now I thought I stepped back and I thought hang on a minute this company this website they're selling their own coffee mycotoxin free and then when you look into mycotoxins you realize that you know they're just natural they're everywhere they're in breast milk they're everywhere so it's just like for me everything's a grift it's like you know you're trying they've the the bulletproof coffee have kind of created an enemy out of normal coffee to sell their own stuff and i see it similar in the truther movement you know always creating enemies to sell their own product Yeah, I can kind of see where you're making that correlation. I mean, with the health food industry, it it is just daunting realizing how much of it is a joke. So yeah, total grift there. As with the truther community, again, it's fine, make money however you need to make money, but just be humble about it. Be a little more honest. And there's a broad range of truthers. I'm not just specifically talking about the Tartaria group. Although, do you still watch YouTube? Are you are you now on other channels and sort of just enjoying content outside of the the sphere of Mefteria? I still watch some of my favorite channels like Critical Drinker. And I think he's even had hit pieces written on him from Forbes magazine trying to like tie him to, you know, like white supremacy and toxic fandom. Otherwise, yeah, no, I I I haven't been I haven't seen too much content. Oh, but on that note, 
and we could talk about this if you would like. I did watch some of the Lore Lodge Mind Unveiled back and forth that took place. Should we leave it on that cliffhanger? <laughs> That's quite a good cliffhanger. <laughs>